We are often told that if we lead with courage and not within our comfort zone, we will get to the desired destination. I want to challenge that a little bit today. Welcome to Thank God It's a Story Saturday, a weekly video series where I share stories with you that you can use to make your messages connect. Today's story is a story that I heard about four years ago on CBS This Morning. The story goes back to 27th of March, 1977 in the Canary Islands. On that day, at the last part, Palamas Airport, which is relatively larger airport amongst all the other airports in the Canary Islands, flights were scheduled to land. Now, because there had been a bomb scare, a lot of the flights got diverted to a tiny island called the Tenerife Island. So this tiny island with tiny airport became unexpectedly really busy on that day because it was a Sunday. There were only two air traffic controllers on duty that day. One of the flights that was positioned and stationed there and got diverted there was of KLM flight 4805. The captain of the flight was Captain Jacob Walhausen Ben Zatten. He used to be the safety head for Royal Dutch Airlines. He used to issue the pilot's licenses and conduct check flights. He was also nicknamed Mr. KLM because his photo had appeared in one of the KLM magazine. When you look at that photo, you get this sense that this man has no problem being in charge. There's enough competence there to project the confidence. Accompanying him was also top-notch cockpit crew, first officer Klaus Meers, 32 years old, and flight engineer William Schrauder, 48 years old. The crucial moments that day started when the KLM flight was getting ready to take off. So the KLM flight was here and there was a Pan Am flight that was on this side of the runway and the Pan Am flight had to take an exit this side and they were given instruction on taking one particular exit and the two planes were just moving in this direction. At one point, Captain Van Zaten started to throttle the aircraft and move forward. First Officer Klaus Meers responded to him by telling him that they don't have the clearance from the air traffic controller as yet. To which, in a very irritated way, Captain Van Zaten responded, No, I know that. Go ahead, ask. So he said okay and he asked the air traffic controller can they take off air traffic controllers responded by giving them the route clearance they were meant to take after the takeoff this was not clearance for takeoff even though they used the word takeoff they actually talked about the route not the fact that they could take off first officer klaus Meyer started to respond to the air traffic controller establishing his understanding of what they were saying Captain Van Zaten interrupted and said, we're going. Given the captain's authority, First Officer Klaus Meers did not say anything and just kept moving along. He did not feel like he had the ability to say anything to such a senior person within the cockpit. Meanwhile, the air traffic controllers told the Pan Am flight crew, please let us know when the runway is clear. To which the Pan Am crew responded, okay, we will let you know when the runway is clear. When the flight engineer William Schrader he heard that, he said, Is he not clear that Pan American? Captain Van Zaten emphatically replied, Oh, yes, and continued to move forward. And imagine KLM flight is moving forward here. Pan Am has not yet taken the exit. There is so much fog, they can't really see each other. Neither the air traffic controllers can see them. By the time Captain Van Zaten William Schrauder and Klaus Meers saw the Pan Am flight, it was already too late. They were briefly airborne, but then they collided into the Pan Am flight. 538 people died that day. Now, what's the point of this story? The point of this story is that a lot of the blame for this particular incident goes to the impatience of Captain Van Zaten and some people say why did the first officer and the flight engineer not have the courage. Now I want to challenge this a little bit. We make a lot of these quick decisions in environments where it's very difficult to display courage. Ethically, it is a good argument. What is the right thing to do? But ethical arguments are not strategies for desired outcome. But the answer really is in systemizing and institutionalizing speaking up. After this Tenerife disaster, a lot of those systems 
and this concept got institutionalized where the first officers and the flight engineers would actually speak up so the point is that whatever you desire in your organization if you do not systemize and institutionalize it's rare that you will get the desired outcome stay storied i'll see you here next saturday with another story mm -hmm.